today we're going to be discussing ancient India and other parts of Eurasia. And the first thing you need to know about ancient India is that those people like to fuck. All right, that's what they did. They are all about the Karma Sutra. And I mean, look at some of these chicks, dude. These chicks are freaking banging, man. I mean, look, look at this one. Look at her. Look at them titties. Holy shit. Just, let's be real, people. How would you like to be this fucking guy right there? Yeah, that's fucking right. You know you would love it. But enough of the Karma Sutra stuff. Let's get on to the interesting stuff, like the Kalisia Temple. Now, this place is incredible. They cut this temple out of the solid, the living rock, all right? The rock that's attached to the earth. They just cut it right out from the top down and excavate it all, you know, all the way around it. So, and this is what you're left with. Now, what's interesting is, is that, I mean, this, the stone is so hard, all right? There's, um, I forget who it was, but, um, I believe it was a, um, a Muslim, uh, um, leader of some army or whatever that fought in India and was he ordered his entire army to destroy this temple and his army spent a year just doing everything they can to it just hitting it with hammers and stones and everything and this is still what's left of it I mean they barely scratched the fucking thing it was just too hard for them to destroy until finally they the you know they had to give up on it they're just like fuck it you know it was just too strong. I mean, and, that, and that's just them not trying to be all precise, but just hitting it with shit, you know? So I imagine the guys who, like, actually chiseled that incredible architecture out of the rock. I mean, that's insane. Now, this is uh, the, the Ajantu cave system. Now, this place is incredible, man. Cut right into the solid side of the cliff, right into the the, um, the rock. I mean, doesn't it remind you of uh, Darren Kuyu? Like, the inside of it and everything? And there they have the giant sleeping Buddha in one of the, the, the Jain caves or whatever. I mean, it's it's incredible. And what's cool is having all the, the giant Buddhas from around the world. You know, it, like, I mean, they're everywhere. You, you guys might not know this, but they literally are all over the planet. These giant Buddhas. This one's uh, in uh, China. It's one of the biggest. Uh, um, I mean, like, they have these giant Buddhas just all over the world in places like you're just not even expecting. Look at the size of this one, dude. This is a, a sleeping Buddha. You know, I mean, look at the size of that head. Is that incredible or what? Look at that fucking toe. How'd you like to get that foot up your ass? These things are so cool, man. I would love to see one of these in person. But why do they always do that? What? It's like they're like, oh yeah, we need to make a giant Buddha for some reason. You know, let's go ahead and do that. Now this the the Bamian Buddha. This is really sad because uh, this was in Afghanistan. See, like even Afghanistan has them. Isn't that weird? They, the Taliban ended up destroying the Bamiyan Buddha in 2001. How shitty is that? And the same thing's happening to the temples in Syria, too. Goddamn fundamentalist extremists, man. I mean, look at this beautiful artwork and everything. Totally gone now. Watch what they do. Just blew it up. Look at that. Is that sad or what? You know they're yelling like Allah Akbar, like, <laughs> like it was their enemy. It was a fucking piece of rock, dude. <laughs> but you know what's funny? You know how long it took them to destroy it? They shot it with with rockets from planes, with bazookas, everything. It took them, they finally had to like drill holes in it and just load it with dynamite because it was so incredibly hard. And yet these, these ancients carved it in there. Next, we want to get into Vimanas. Now, just to be clear, these are true Vimanas right here. That's what a Vimana is. It's a, it's a building, it's a style like of architecture. It's a shape, a pyramidal type shape. And that's why the flying vimanas look very similar to those buildings because that's exactly what they they come from but when you get to uh now when you're talking about like flying vimanas or flying chariot chariots the first one that they speak about is a pushpaka vimana uh and this was in sanskrit sanskrit text or whatever um that uh 
the Demon King uh, Ravana. He actually stole it from Lord Kubra, and it was returned to him by Rama. And these are like from the Jain text or whatever. But the um, but that's like the main time they discuss of the flying Vimanas. Uh, other than that, a lot of people like to reference Vimanaka Sastra. However, Vimanaka Sastra isn't actually um, an ancient text. All right, it is. It's it's a it's a a newer one it was written in the uh, 1800s and it's described as the um aeronautics of vimana or whatever however um anyone who knows anything about aeronautics knows that the book doesn't make any sense it's it's complete crap and not only that but the guy said that um he was given this under he was given this information uh by um uh, Bar, uh Bhattavaya. it was just um uh, like a sage who lived like 10,000 years ago or whatever. Uh, so, I mean, like, you know, so he was channeling this book. You get it? Like, that's just, you know, it was like written in the 1800s and stuff too. But a lot of people like to reference that. However, it doesn't really have anything to do with the ancient Vimanas. I mean, technically, even this dude right here could be considered a Vimana, all right? Because, uh, gods could ride him as well and fly through the sky as a big golden mechanical bird and shit like that. Isn't that a cool looking fucking statue? I think it's bad as hell, man. I forget his name, but he was he was like a badass or something. It's weird how like India always has like shows like these hybrids of people and animals like um like the Nagas, uh which are like a mix between humans and snakes or humans and cobras or whatever, which is really cool and I mean they have like monkey man and and like dog man and this is fucking weird man and there's also a lot of depictions of them even like having sex with animals and shit like it's a, it's a weird fucking culture i mean they like to fuck i guess anything apparently <laughs> next we come to mohanju Daru, the mound of the dead now this city was discovered in the 1960s or whatever but it was spoken about in the maharabata so you know thousands and thousands of years ago um, supposedly a great war took place here but what's interesting is some of the stuff that you find there like they find uh, skeletons throughout the entire like this one section is they're just laying in the streets look some people are like holding hands and stuff and what's cool is that or what's interesting anyway is that um, these skeletons are some of the most irradiated skeletons ever found on earth um, also you find pieces of a uh, vitrification everywhere that's where the stone has literally turned into glass because of uh, fusion or uh but you know they think that maybe there was a nuclear war or something like that but what's interesting is that it's that's what it's like spoken about in the maharabata uh where they they used um like the brahma weapon uh which was created by lord brahma and it was supposed to be um um a weapon that was like as bright as 10,000 suns and it would um, knock down forests and everything and it would turn uh, the after effects would turn people gray and their hair and fingernails would fall out stuff like that uh, what I think is cool is that if you look at some of the Sanskrit writing it really reminds me of um, uh, ancient Mesopotamia and the Sumerians so it's like there's obviously some kind of connection there because they look so similar but then look at that that's from ancient India and this is a depiction of Gilgamesh all right, and Gilgamesh and that you know these um these Sanskrit drawings from ancient India show the same thing. This person holding two lions. Look at that. Now now when's the last time you seen a hairy elephant? I'm just gonna go ahead and say that's a mammoth. <laughs> that's probably old as shit, you know. Um, but then here's also here's Hercules, you know, killing two lions and stuff. So uh, there's like a parallel that you could draw between like Hercules and this warrior from um ancient india and gilgamesh and they all like have the same kind of like look to them also uh look at some of the sumerian statues with the white eyes and stuff and people say that looks like um they have some kind of relationship with gray aliens because of the big eyes but look at this stuff found at mohanju all right now these motherfuckers look like aliens to me but wait to i mean like look at some of these guys and look at some other depictions this is a drawing of an alien that was spotted in Pesca pescagoula all right uh, and a really famous encounter. I mean, I mean, that, look at the pointy nose and the pointy ears and things. It's just, it's so weird. This is, you know. And then, like, look at these guys. Look at these eyes and shit. With these big heads, these little guys with these big eyes. 
I mean, and this is an, uh, another depiction of an alien that was actually reported. With a pointy nose and the big round eyes like that? I mean, is that crazy or what? Now, although these uh, figurines might have some similarities between, like, this one alien, there's another civilization that has it even closer. And where does it come from? Turkey. Of course, it always fucking leads back to Turkey. What do you fucking know? Um, a few days ago, I was supposed to have a debate with, um another YouTuber um, by the name of Coast to Ghost uh, on the validity of Secure Team 10. And we ended up uh, talking and uh, bullshit and trying to set up a debate, but he was on a different time than me. I think he's like in New York time and I'm on Washington. It was really different. Then we ended up just bullshit. And then we ended up just like t talking and being cool. So he ended up just turning out to be fucking really, really cool. And uh, he even sent me this pic. Take a look at this, you guys. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cool? He said, wrote, Coast to Ghost, NYC. Yeah, NYC. Congrats on 3,000 UFO Kyle Proof. Aye, look at that shit, dude. And look at this fucking tattoo of his aliens and shit, dude. I was fucking, I'll put a little, uh, little crop circle up around his forehead to make him a little UFO proof alien, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. All right. Uh, straight up, thank you, Coast to Ghost. Coast to Ghost, I appreciate it, dude. Awesome picture. Kick ass fucking tattoo. I love it, brother. That's the shit. All right. I'd also like to give a shout out to Rain Days. Um, we've been uh, feuding back and forth for a while, <laughs> um, going off, and um, uh, you know sometimes the trolls like you know I end up uh, actually really liking. So, um, but uh, like this is just funny. You know, he says, um, "Okay, first off, uh, I don't think you are not intelligent, or that you know nothing about the subject matter." Oh, and on that note, if you want to make a crusade on truth and disinformation, please do. I will be behind that 100%. Okay. And I'm just like, <laughs> I just found it funny because I'm like, you know, laugh out loud. Maybe you should have looked around my channel to see what it's all about first. What if I am a crusader for the truth? Unfortunately, he obviously didn't look around my channel or he would know I am a hardcore crusader for the truth. Um, he probably doesn't understand why, but, uh, you know, Hopefully, if he looks around at some of my videos and maybe watches my vlog or something, he'll know, he'll understand why. But just to give you a shout out, Rain Days, there you go, buddy. All right, so for anyone who doesn't know, if you want to come and join my website and join us with our live chats and, and bullshit about UFOs and tell us your UFO stories or, you know, basically anything UFO or ancient alien related, just come to my website. Now, you can just go to my homepage right here on YouTube and click right on my website. The link will take you straight to it. Now, if you want to come and join the live chats, you have to remember to, you have to sign up first. You have to become a member first, which it's free and we're not going to spam you or none of that bullshit. So no worries. All right. But after you sign up, you would go to the chat room right here. Okay. And once this loads up, this has a couple different options for you to, uh, to pick through when getting your camera or if you just want to uh, text chat or if you just want to talk on the microphone. Either way, you don't have to be on camera if you don't want to. So just to show you real quick, you would go to go. Okay, now I'm going to go to start broadcasting. Now I'm going to choose a camera. There's me right there. Hello. <laughs> so this will be the camera that I choose. Continue. Now I have a separate microphone, so I'm going to select that microphone. And then uh, open microphone or push to talk. But I'm going to do open microphone. Bam, and there I am. <laughs> Easy as pie, right? All right, so now that we got that, you can also get the um, the Tiny Chat app, and this will um, allow you to join into the conversation too, straight from your phone or your tablet. Just sign up, and the room is called Rudder Nation. All right, download that and sign up and um, and join it from from the app too as well. I used the app just the other day; it works great, so no problems there. Also, one thing I wanted, I think that's real important for everybody, is that like they have the UFO blacklist you know that started by our friend Constantine over at UFO theater and that's a list that tells you all the shitty UFO channels out there but what about all the good UFO channels so I decided that's why I'm gonna start the UFO white list uh, what it is is if you come here and suggest any UFO channel that should you know you think is a 
good quality that has you know good sightings is a reliable source you know they're critical thinkers they they actually believe in real ufology no no bullshit they don't post any any fake ufo videos or none of that shit that's the kind of people i'm looking for no no one who misidentifies stuff if you can't identify it you, you, i mean like if you're <laughs> If you're not able to research your own footage, then there's an issue. So no car headlights in the distance, no fake airplanes, no balloons, no planets or stars or meteorites. If you're filming that stuff and you think it's a UFO and you don't know, well, you got to learn how to do better research, right? So we're going to try to avoid all of those channels as well. Uh, don't be butthurt if I if you come and suggest a name and I don't put it on there. You know, I'm, it's, it's not going to be a very big list <laughs> because there's not that many awesome UFO channels out there. I'm not even on the list. <laughs> so, uh, but if you guys think of any, uh, come and uh, post it here and let me know. And I'll go and research them and find out if they, if they make the cut. Are they good enough for the UFO white list? All right. All right, you guys. UFO proof out. He ordered his entire army to destroy this temple, and his army spent a year just doing everything they can to it, just hitting it with hammers and stones and everything, and this is still what's left of it. I mean, they barely scratched the fucking thing. It was just too hard for them to destroy until finally they, the, you know, they had to give up on it. They're just like, fuck it, you know? It was just too strong. I mean, and, that, and that's just them not trying to be all precise but just hitting it with shit you know so i imagine the guys who like actually chisel that incredible architecture out of the rock i mean that's insane now this is uh the the ajantu cave system this place is incredible man cut right into the solid side of the cliff right into the the um, the rock i mean doesn't it remind let's be real people how would you like to be this fucking guy right there yeah that's fucking right you know you would love it but enough of the Karma Sutra stuff. Let's get on to the interesting stuff like the Kalisia Temple. Now, this place is incredible. They cut this temple out of the solid, the living rock, all right? The rock that's attached to the earth. They just cut it right out from the top down and excavate it all, you know, all the way around it. So, and this is what you're left with. Now, what's interesting is, is that, I mean, this, the stone is so hard, all right? There's, um, I forget who it was, but um, I believe it was a um, a Muslim uh, um, leader, uh, some army or whatever that fought in India and was. Today, we're going to be discussing ancient India and other parts of Eurasia. And the first thing you need to know about ancient India is that those people like to fuck. All right. That's what they did. They are all about the Karma Sutra and. I mean, look at some of these chicks, dude. These chicks are freaking banging, man. I mean, look look at this one. Look at her. Look at them titties. Holy shit. Just 